In this video, I want to talk about syndromes we can see with dysfunction of the right cerebral hemisphere, right cerebral hemisphere syndromes, hemisphere syndromes, which in most ways is basically a mirror image of the left cerebral hemisphere syndromes with a couple of important differences. So looking at our person here, if we have dysfunction of the right cerebral hemisphere, we may see weakness and or upper motor neuron signs of the left side of the body because the right cerebral hemisphere in general controls most of the skeletal muscle on the left side of the body. And the reason for that is that the upper motor neurons start in an area of the right cerebral hemisphere for the left side of the body. And let me just sketch out some of these. So there'll be upper motor neurons in the cortical bulbar tract going to some of the lower motor neurons in the brainstem and upper motor neurons in the cortical spinal tract that'll be going down to the spinal cord on the other side, on the left side, so that most of the skeletal muscle on the left side of the body will be controlled by the right cerebral hemisphere. So with dysfunction of that right cerebral hemisphere, we're gonna affect the input to all those lower motor neurons, or if there's dysfunction just of the parts of the right cerebral hemisphere where those upper motor neurons come from. If the upper motor neurons are affected, we often see slurred speech as well because the upper motor neurons are controlling some of the muscles involved in speech, like the muscles that move the lips. So you can see slurred speech from involvement of those upper motor neurons. Let me just label those. So these are the upper motor neurons that can cause weakness and other upper motor neuron signs on the left side of the body. We can also see somatosensory abnormalities, also of the left side of the body with right cerebral hemisphere dysfunction. Let me just mark that with this cyan color because there are areas in the right cerebral hemisphere that are going to get most of that somatosensory information and bring it to consciousness. And the reason that ends up on the other side is because those pathways in the central nervous system, once that somatosensory information enters the spinal cord or the brainstem, there's a few different pathways that'll carry that information up to the cerebral hemisphere, but it's going to carry it to the other side. So somatosensory stimuli coming into the left side of the body will end up bringing most of that information over to the right cerebral hemisphere to be be perceived. So that dysfunction of the right cerebral hemisphere, those axons carrying that information, or just the areas of the right cerebral hemisphere that end up receiving that somatosensory information. If there's dysfunction of those areas, then we can see somatosensory abnormalities on the left side of the body. The same is true with vision usually. So I'll just draw this semicircle here to represent the vision coming in to the left side from the person's left side. And that visual information is going to come over to the right cerebral hemisphere and end up in a particular area of the cerebral cortex where that visual information gets further processing. So that's this visual information, visual, so that if you get those axons carrying that visual information or the area of the cerebral cortex in the right cerebral hemisphere that receives that visual information, a person often has abnormalities of vision off to their left side. Oh, and I forgot to label somatosensory, so let me just put somatosensory. And the other senses are usually okay. Just like we talked about with the left cerebral hemisphere, with a right cerebral hemisphere syndrome, we usually don't see problems of the other senses because they tend to go to both cerebral hemispheres. So that if only one cerebral hemisphere is dysfunctional, the other cerebral hemisphere can usually handle those other senses so that a person doesn't tend to notice any problems with that. But a person often does notice somatosensory abnormalities and visual abnormalities on the other side of their body. And then since most people have their language areas in the left cerebral hemisphere, we tend not to see abnormal language with right cerebral hemisphere dysfunction. But we often see a different behavioral problem with the dysfunction of the right cerebral hemisphere because there seem to be some areas in the right cerebral hemisphere that have a lot to do with attention and particularly a lot to do with attention to the left side. So let me just write left attention, attention to the left side. And it actually seems like these areas pay attention to both sides of a person, both sides of the body and the environment, but that the left cerebral hemisphere seems to mostly just be paying attention to the right side of the person's body and the environment. So that if we see dysfunction of the right cerebral hemisphere or these areas involved in attention, the left cerebral hemisphere doesn't seem to be able to compensate to pay attention to the left side of the body and the environment. And so a person can lose attention to the left side. 
and there's different severities that this can happen. It can be mild or it can be really severe. And so this syndrome, when a person's not paying attention to one side, we call this hemi-neglect. Hemi, which just means half, and neglect, just not paying attention. And we often see this just to the left side of the body and the environment. And it's an attention thing. It's not really a, a sensory thing, although we notice it with the senses, but it actually crosses all sorts of senses. So they may not notice visual information coming in from the left. They may not notice auditory information, sounds coming in from the left. They may not notice somatosensory information, for instance, being touched on the left side. And when it's real mild, they may actually be able to perceive all sorts of different sensory information coming in from the left side if it's coming in on its own. But if you present stimuli on both sides at the same time, then often they won't notice the stimuli on the left side. Like if you touch a person on the left side, they'll say they feel it. And if you touch them on the right side, they'll say they feel it. But if you touch them on both sides at the same time, they'll say they only feel it on the, on the right side because they're just not paying as much attention to this left side. So those are some of the major abnormalities we see with dysfunction of the right cerebral hemisphere. And just like with the left cerebral hemisphere syndromes, there are a lot of variants on this because you can get partial lesions of just parts of the hemisphere involving some of the pathways of information, but not others. Or lesions are just parts of the cerebral cortex involving some of these functions, but not other parts of the functions. So there's kind of a group of syndromes for both the left and the right cerebral hemisphere syndromes. But I'll stop there for this introduction.